What a morning. At least I'm home now. Hi there. Um, hi? So who are you visiting today? Huh? Seriously, who are you here to see? Can't let you in unless you tell me. Um, I live here? No, you don't. I know everybody in the building. I don't know you. Really? I live here. Nice try. I know everyone in this building, and I don't know you. Sorry. I've lived here for five years. Then how come I've never seen you before? I have no idea. Doesn't matter. If you lived here, I'd know you. That's all there is to it. Who the hell are you? Jim Birdo. All right. Jim, where's the regular doorman? Geez, where have you been? He's on strike. He's what? Strike. All the building servicemen in the city are doing it. Union rules or something. I stepped in to help because I know everybody. How come nobody told me? Notices were posted all over the building. I put them up myself. If you lived here, you'd have seen them. Who pays attention to things like that? Well, that's not my problem. Please, I've had a really tough morning. I need to get home. Sorry, lady. Rules are rules. Listen, I really live here. Fourth floor, number 4E. 4E? Hmm. Isn't that apartment empty? No! I live there! And I want to go there. Thank you very much. Oh, hmm. Maybe you're telling the truth. He sees reason. Thank God. Do you have any ID? A driver's license or something? Yes. I have a driver's license. It's upstairs. In my desk drawer. Crap. <laughs> Come on, this is New York. Who actually drives? True. But I still can't let you in unless you prove you live here. I have my apartment key. Will that do? Sorry, no. That could be any key. Well, let's go upstairs and see if it works. And leave the door unattended? Can't do it. Sorry. Okay, I have no ID, and you don't know me. What can I do to prove that I live here? Hmm. Well, can anyone in the building vouch for you? I'm not sure. I mean, I don't really know anybody here. How long have you lived here again? Be quiet. Not all of us are social butterflies. Okay, whatever. Hey, what about Nishanti Sharma? She could vouch for you. Who is this Nis... Uh, Nish... Nishanti. Nishanti Sharma. He lives in 4F. You know, right next door to 4E. You really don't get out much, do you? Your point? Nothing, but I'm sure she could vouch for you. Great, call her up. She's not here. Of course she isn't. So I gotta wait here all day for her. You might have to. Although... She usually goes to Washington Square Park in the morning. You can look for her there. So, let me get this straight. You want me to go all the way to the park to look for a woman who might be there, and if she recognizes me, then, and only then, I'll be granted the privilege of entering my own home? That's pretty much it, yeah. This is really stupid. I'm not the one who forgot my ID. How long is this strike going to last? I don't know. Could be a couple hours or a couple days. Depend on whether they reach a settlement or not. I don't know the details. Out of my way. I'm going in. I wouldn't do that. Why? Are you going to stop me? Me? No. But I've got a cell phone in my pocket with 911 program, Dan. All I have to do is hit send and the cops will be here in five minutes. Are you serious? Totally serious. I don't believe this. I'll be back. See you around. I've never seen this kid before in my life. So near, and yet so far. The windows look into the lobby of the building.
Washington Square. It's been a while since I've been here. Still looks the same, I guess. Although the dog park is empty, I wonder why. Please note, dog walking park is closed until further notice. Hmm. The dog park is empty. Mmm. Now I'm getting a stress headache. I need to get home. He's wearing one of those extendable leashes. The dog's leash is tied to the trash can. That's her. I recognize her from my building. Nishanti Sharma, was it? This is going to be awkward. That's Nishanti Sharma. My next door neighbor, apparently. She's playing some sort of flute. Uh, excuse... I can't do it. I can't just barge up to her. Not in front of all those people. They're all staring. Oh, for heaven's sake. Don't worry, Moti. I'm coming. There. All better. I can't take you anywhere, can I? Oh, it's you. The lady next door. Yeah. Hi. Rhonda, isn't it? No. Rosangela. Well, Rosangela. I hope my friend here hasn't been giving you any trouble. Oh, no, no. No trouble. Now don't go defending him. You'll just spoil him. Sorry. Anyway, I don't think we've formally met. I'm Nishanti. Rosangela. So you said. Oh, right. Um... Yes? I have a strange favor to ask. Go ahead and ask. What are neighbors for? You know that building servicemen strike? Yes. Jim Birdo is covering, isn't he? Yeah, that's the problem, see. He doesn't recognize me. Oh? Oh. So you need me to vouch for you? Yeah, I know this is pretty stupid. Don't worry about it. Moti is getting a little cranky anyway. Let's get you home. Thanks. Mm. Are you all right? I'm fine. I just need to get home. All right. Let's keep walking. Hello, Jim. Hey, Miss Sharma. Jim, this is Rosangela. She lives here. She does? Okay. Sorry about earlier. Had to be sure. Oh, it was no problem at all. Do you want anything else? Milk or orange juice, perhaps? Um... Never mind. Just get out of my way. Well, here we are. Yes. Finally. That stupid kid. Well, perhaps. But try not to be so hard on him. We're all neighbors, after all. Yeah, I guess. <coughs> Looks like somebody's hungry. I'd best get this spoiled puppy fed. Feel free to drop in any time you want. Sure, maybe. No maybes. I know we New Yorkers don't usually talk to our neighbors, but who cares? The city can be a lonely place, especially when you live alone. I've got Moti. Who do you have? Oh, look, now I've offended you. That's what I get for butting in. I'm sure you're fine. Although your episode in the park tells me otherwise. And your eyes. Well, let's just say the offer stands. Sure. You go home now. We'll see each other soon, Rosangela, I'm sure. Hey. Yes? Um, 
You can call me Rosa, if you like. Rosangela is kind of a mouthful, you know. All right, Rosa. You have a good day now. What a strange lady. The elevator. That door leads to Nishanti's apartment. I can't remember who lives there. That door leads to my apartment. Home, thank God. I've never been so happy to see a 500 square foot room in my life. Ugh. It's just a telephone. Hello? This is Dr. Quentin from Bellevue Hospital. Yes? I was your aunt's primary care physician. Did you receive my letter? Yes, I received it. I haven't had the time to come by, though. That's all right. I'm sure you're busy. However, should you find the time today, my entire schedule is free. I... sure. I'll keep that in mind. Thank you. Good day. If I don't visit him, he's just going to keep bothering me. I suppose I should just get it over with. Just a trash can filled with crumpled up novel ideas. Just some old book review clippings. My computer. It's a bit old, but it lets me access the internet and do my writing. That leads to my bedroom. It's an oversized closet, but it suits me fine. That's Griff, the P.I. Bear. I've had him as long as I can remember. He's in horrible shape, but I don't have the heart to throw him away. It's a photograph of Auntie Lauren and me. It's me. I look scared out of my mind. I don't remember when this picture was taken, but I look about four or five years old. Auntie Lauren. She took care of me after my parents died. For most of my life, Auntie Lauren was a vegetable, slowly rotting away in a hospital bed. I don't remember what she was like before that. This picture is all I have to go by. I must have watched all these a dozen times. This TV was here when I moved in. It's fake, but kind of pretty. Out of sight, out of mind. Just a standard stove-oven combo. My window, with the curtains firmly shut. I'm not ready for bed. Come in! Hello, Rosa. Come in, come in. Don't mind the pooch, he's harmless. So, um... How are you? Oh, I'm just fine. Right, Moti? Aren't we just fine? Thanks again for helping me out earlier. I'd probably be sleeping in a hotel tonight if it weren't for you. Oh, didn't you hear? The strike's over. Really? It only lasted a few hours according to the report on the radio. I suppose that's irony. I suppose so. So, you play the flute, huh? Yes, I play the flute. It's called a bansuri. What about you? Do you play an instrument? Me? No, I can hardly play the kazoo. Let's see. You strike me as being creatively inclined. Are you a painter? A writer. Well, I'm trying to be a writer. I knew it. Anything published? Nothing really, aside from book reviews in the Village Eye. Village Eye? You mean that little paper they sell at the stand? You've read it? I've seen it around, but I've never actually read it. Perhaps I will the next time I see it. That dog is adorable. Moti? He's spoiled rotten, but he's good company. He's taken quite a shine to you, that's for sure. Huh. 
Yeah, usually I'm not good with animals. You never had a childhood pet? A pet? No, I had a teddy bear. <laughs> well, you probably had the right idea. Moti's a little thing, but you wouldn't know it from the amount he eats. He's very active, it seems. Yes, that probably explains it. See that box of biscuits? I buy a new one every two days. Moti doesn't have a stomach. He has a black hole that sucks in food. Feel free to give him one if you like. You have a very nice apartment. Thank you. A bit small, but that's New York for you. You seem very friendly with the people in this building. Well, I didn't grow up here. I didn't realize it was taboo to chat with neighbors. Well, it's not taboo exactly, it's just... Oh, I know, just one of those unspoken things. I've found that most people are pretty friendly, though, once you take the first step. People have their defenses up most of the time. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, I do. Why do you play the flute in the park? It's a place to go, I suppose. I was walking there one day, and I had the bansuri with me, so I started playing. Next thing I knew, I had a bunch of people around me. So I go there as often as I can now. It gets me out of this stuffy apartment, and I admit I like the attention. Plus, Moti loves the dog run there. Well, he did until they closed it down. Why did they close down the dog run? It seemed okay to me. Nobody really knows. It started about a week ago. Dogs started howling, running around like maniacs, acting strange. Some even hurled themselves at the fence door trying to get out. They say it's some kind of high-frequency wave that's caused by electric cables or something. Some high-pitched sound that the dogs can hear, but we can't. But I know better. You know better? Definitely. I notice these things. I could tell that things weren't quite right. Something in the air. It's not a high-pitched noise. That would only cause a dog pain. This was more than pain. The dogs were scared. What was there to be scared of? I have no idea. But I know what I sensed, just like you did. Me? You sensed it. Don't think I didn't notice. I didn't sense anything. Well, perhaps. Maybe I'm just spouting nonsense. Could I try feeding the dog? Sure. Here, take one. I have plenty. Go ahead and feed him. He's always hungry. Well, I'd better go. Take care, Rosa. Come back whenever you'd like. Hmm, these dog biscuits are really mushy. Let me guess, you're hungry again? Go get it!